Okay, so it's time to talk about the 3.0. Hi everybody and welcome back to the Retro Ghetto. So like a lot of you people, I love watching video game room tours. Um, I love seeing how other people display their stuff. And it kind of got me thinking, I had a couple of really nice game rooms before I ever started on YouTube. I never had the chance to show it off. Um, and then recently I kind of found some old phones. I went through some old photographs every now and again, you know. You look through old pictures with the missus and whatnot. And while she was sort of reminiscing over pictures of Little Man, I was reminiscing over pictures of my old games rooms and it got me thinking like, it'd be a great concept to sort of show you guys the evolution of my game rooms. Um, as I said, there's been a couple that have never seen YouTube. Um, so hopefully today I'm gonna be able to show you um, using photos and a bit of old footage, um, my old game rooms and what I was able to achieve with them and then the evolution to where we are, not only today, but where we're going. I've got some very exciting news about the Retro Ghetto 3.0. We're going to get to that a bit later on. Retro Ghetto. So yeah, you would think that this would start at what was the Retro Ghetto 1.0, right? But it actually started a little bit before that. I was lucky enough to own my own flat prior to meeting Mrs. Retro Ghetto. So we're talking about, I don't know, seven, eight years ago now. And as you can see from some of the photos that I'm putting up now, it was very, very basic. It was very much a bachelor pad. I had some amazing times there. And wow, if those walls could talk, let me tell you there would be some stories to tell. But as you can see from the footage, it's very bare bones. It was very much just me, my TV, um, a sofa for my mates to sit on, and a few games as you can see. Now, I've always been a gamer my whole life. I actually made a video once upon a time called My Life in Gaming, and I explored like my journey through games. And if you haven't seen that, please check it out. I'll put the link in the description below. But as you can see, I had acquired or started to acquire a bit of a Super Nintendo collection. And this was sort of the start of my video game collecting. At that point, I was only collecting loose carts because it was purely for the thrill of playing at that time. I'd gone through many Super Nintendo consoles. I'd always sort of picked up the standard Mario All-Stars and Street Fighter 2 and then I'd sell it on and then a year down the line, I'd get the itch to play them and I'd buy it all over again. And I must have done that three or four times before, as you see now, I started buying quite a few loose carts and one could almost say I probably became a collector at that point. I mean, as we were either labelling them and getting them their own little sleeves. So that was sort of like the beginnings of what you sort of see behind me now. Um, alongside that, I only had a PlayStation 4. I think that's where I first got into my FIFA. I started playing FIFA about FIFA 15, 16. So I did about three years of playing FIFA quite, um, I want to say competitively, but yeah, quite intensively, intensely uh, online. I spent three years before I realised I was spending too much money just to get angry <laughs> and break controllers. Fever Rage is real, right? So I haven't played FIFA since FIFA 17. But yeah, that was very much the start of it. Um, I think I also then sold that collection again. I went through that cycle again, and then I got that itch again. And at this point I met, Miss, met Mrs. Retro Ghetto. And for my birthday I said, look, I really want to buy another Super Nintendo. And she bought me one and it came with a box game. I think it was a boxed version of, I think it was either Mario All Stars or Lemmings. Um, so yeah, it's very much Mrs. Retro Ghetto's fault, right? That we are in the position that we're in now with like a thousand video games. But that was the start. I was determined to do it differently this time. And I was going to do it boxed only. And that's where the collection that you see behind me now began. Retro Ghetto. Okay, so fast forward a year or so later, myself and Mrs. Retro Ghetto bought our first house. It was a three-story new build. And even the day that we went to see it as it was still being built, I kind of bags in this room, right? It was a little room that was kind of like almost sold as an office and it was like very much in like an L shape and before it was built as literally as it was just studs on the wall I said right that's my room that's my video games room and that is what became the Retro Ghetto 1.0 I absolutely love this room as I say it was the first ever room that was solely dedicated to my things and um, my games and I think a lot of my desire for that came from the fact that I'm one of three children I never had my own bedroom growing up I mean, I used to watch Harry Potter, right? And I used to envy him that he had that little cupboard in, under the stairs, right? I'd have done anything for my own space, no matter how big or small. So yeah, when the time came, um, I bags in that room and I put a lot of time and energy into this room to make it the best that it could be. As I say, it was very much a small room, um, like an L shape. And on one of the walls, obviously I had my TV set up and you'll be seeing now the pictures, like the evolution um, of where that began and what it became. At one point, one of the largest uh, wall space was for Funko Pop vinyls. 
I bought loads of Funko Pop vinyls um, and luckily I got in before the sort of curve, right? Before it became really popular, I found them and I found all these franchises of things that I'd never had toys before and I kind of like fell in love and then it became a collection and yeah, I had hundreds of them and a the whole wall full at one point. I got in and I got out at the right time. Um, as I say, I got in before it became too popular and I got out at the height of it. I made quite a lot of money selling some of those Funko Pop vinyls. There's vinyls that I bought for £10 and I sold for over £300. So yeah, I did very, very well financially out of that. And that money just went back then into video games. And it all became about solely about video games from that point on really, and toys of course. Um, as you can see, I started with like a Super Nintendo wall when I had just a few box games. Um, and I started making my own Nintendo signage using sort of perla beads. It used like perla bead art where you, you press the little plastic pieces in and you iron them and make your own signage and stuff. So this was light years away from me owning my own official Nintendo sign and my own Super Nintendo sign. I was making my own. Um, and eventually I grew that wall. And then as time went on, I had a full Super Nintendo wall. And to this day, I still love looking at these images because I think it's amazing to have all that artwork on display. Since then, I've struggled for space because I've got so much amazing stuff. I can't display my Super Nintendo games in that way. But hopefully, with the emergence of the next games room, we'll be able to do something similar and display the artwork more so than what I can now. You'll also notice the amount of box consoles that I had at the time. That was something I ended up selling because I ended up not having enough room. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more later on. But my focus was just to dis dedicate myself to the games as opposed to the consoles. Um, you'll also notice my Super Nintendo table. Um, I didn't have enough room for it. It was a custom built. I didn't have enough room to use it as a table. So what I did was I took the legs off it and put it on the wall. And it actually made a really nice display piece. So I had that above my television. The other side of the L was used for a dartboard. Um, I remember like posting to Instagram when I first got my dartboard. Like day one, how long would it take me to throw uh, a 180? And I'm sad to say that to this day I still have not thrown a 180. I'm not great at darts and I kind of... I'll fit some starts where I'll play it quite avidly for a few weeks and then I won't touch it again for a few months. But yeah, Project 180 is still uh, ongoing, shall we say. Um, and yeah, and underneath that I had all my collectibles and stuff. You'll see I used every single inch of this small room. Even my Switch games were put down the side of the door um, on a little piece of wall space that there was between the door and the corner of the room. Yeah, I absolutely fell in love with this room. But I inevitably outgrew it. Me and my collections are like bacteria, right? If you put us in a a space we're gonna multiply until it's full and that's what happened here um around that time little uh, little man became a thing i suppose uh, probably a better way to word that was to say that the missus got pregnant and i convinced her to basically let me have the, the bigger bedroom that was going to be for him because guys you know what it's like when you have children when they're babies they don't use their bedroom it's just a, it's just like a there's just a bed really um so yeah we turned it into a nursery for him and then I went into the second bedroom, and that is when we get to the Retro Ghetto 2.0. Okay, so the Retro Ghetto 2.0 is my favourite room to date. I put so much effort into this. I had enough space, I completely cleared it out, and this was the first time in my life that everything was on me, right? Um, because it had been Little Man's Nursery before that, I completely decorated it from top to bottom. I put my own carpet in, I chose the wallpaper, I chose the paint. Second guessed myself a lot because it was like a lot of decisions for me to make to make this perfect games room. But I was delighted with the results. I had like that brick effect wallpaper that everyone was doing a few years ago. And um, yeah, grey on the walls, dark grey carpets. I didn't want it to worry about getting it messy. Um, but as you can see from these images, it just kind of all fell into place. That wall particularly with my Super Nintendo games and my Pac-Man arcade one-up machine everything just sort of fit inch perfect, or at least that's how it appears. There was a lot of modifying that IKEA furniture and shelving to make it fit, um, but I was so happy with how it turned out. Um, I went through various different sofas because I struggled to get comfortable. Um, but yeah, various different sofas and chairs, and I think part of the fun of games rooms is the reorganizing, right? And uh, yeah, I did a fair share of reorganizing. Playing the games room Tetris was like my favorite hobby at that time. One of the walls at one point was just full of kiosks. I'd amassed three kiosks at that stage. And at one point I even had um, a Pac-Man, um, what would you call it? Like uh, a fruit machine, right? I managed to pick one of them up. That's one of my way, way early pickup videos when I was still using like a crappy phone and it was all back to front. But yeah, I wouldn't advise going back and look at it. But yeah, I managed to pick up that for free, I think. I think the guy just let me have it. Um, I sold that for a couple of hundred quid uh, a few weeks later on once I realised that I couldn't fit it in my room. Um, the life-size Zelda was in there. As you can see, he's holding toilet roll because that was like the height of uh, 
2020 and the great toilet roll shortage, uh, you know, when the pandemic started. So, yeah, fantastic memories of that games room. I did do a full tour of this. I'll put the link in that below. But as I say, the footage that you're seeing now will be taken from there. And yeah, that was the last games room and really the only games room that I put 100% effort into. I loved how I had it looking. And uh, yeah, that takes me on to the 2.5 that we're in now. Retro Ghetto. Okay, so this is dubbed the 2.5 because it was only meant to be temporary. It is temporary. Um, I thought it'd be a few months due to one reason or another and not being able to secure builders and rising costs and walls and pandemics and everything else. Um, the games room 3.0 has taken longer than I thought. So I've been in here just over a year now when I only imagined it would be a few months. It's full. It's full to the rafters. And what that has, has meant is that a lot of my stuff is in storage. I hate that as a collector. I hate having things in different places. But between garages, lofts, uh, relatives, houses, storage units, I've got so much stuff that I would love to have displayed. But sadly, it can't all be under this roof right now. Listen, first world problems, I don't want to moan. I grew up, like I say, sharing a bedroom. I know that not everyone's fortunate enough to have any kind of room. So I don't want to um, come across like a spoiled little brat about it. Like I'm happy to have my own space in here, but it's just not big enough for the amount of things that I own. I've, pri I've tried to um, prioritize games. I've got all my games in here and it just, I wanted it to be a usable space. So usable to record for YouTube and usable to play my games. That was the priority. So a lot of things aren't in this room that I would like to be. I'm happy with how it is, but as I say, you see my pickups videos, guys. I'm constantly buying stuff. And uh, yeah, it's definitely time that we've moved on to the 3.0. Retro Ghetto. Okay, so it's time to talk about the 3.0. I've been meeting with a builder recently. Um, I must have spoke to over 20 builders in the past year. This one I get a really good feeling about. Um, nothing is concrete, pardon the pun, just yet. But I'm hoping late summer we're going to commence the building. Um, we've done a lot of backwards and forwards on exactly what we want. Um, it's all getting sort of detailed down as to what that's going to be. It should be an approximately three week build. The plans have changed slightly for various different reasons, including the budget tripling <laughs> in the past year. Partly because I've underestimated how much cost is involved with something like that. But also because, as I say, it's probably the worst time post-war um, to have any sort of building works done. So. What I've done is I have changed the plan slightly, but in doing so, it's also added some positives. I think to explain it better, we're better off to go out and take a look. So we're outside of what will be the Retro Ghetto 3.0. If you can remember way back, I discussed how I was planning to elongate this garage to my boundary line. And then I was gonna create an L shape right the way down here. And into there. Ignore my current makeshift gym. Ghetto by name, ghetto by nature. Um, so yeah, what's gonna happen now is I'm not gonna do the L. So basically what I'm gonna do is just take the garage and extend it to the boundary line as a straight line with no L. What that means is I don't have to put a steel beam in. I don't have to apply for planning permission and I can save thousands and thousands of pounds. Originally I was disappointed because I wanted that. However, after checking the square feet, it's wider and considerably longer than the game room I had before. So I still have a lot more space to play with. Also, one of the benefits of doing that is that I've got a much bigger gym area. So the plan is to have a door that will be somewhere in this bottom area of the room. These fence panels will be getting replaced. Um, and so I'll only be able to have access to this small outside area through the Retro Ghetto 3.0. So basically it's gonna be my own patio area, i.e. my own gym. So when the time comes, I'm gonna put all sort of canopies and stuff up above here. Um, so it's weather resistant. I'm gonna get a much better equipment and I'm gonna have a much bigger area for my gym. So that's one of the key benefits of doing it this way. Inside the dilapidated garage. And also another thing which I've been thinking about doing is utilizing the loft space. So there's a lot of space up here, as you can see. Um, it doesn't quite give you the perception on camera of the depth, but there's a lot of room to play with. So another thing that I'm going to do is look to get some of these beams removed so that I can utilize this space better. Get a ladder, you can actually go up there. I'll be able to use it for storage and, you know, collections and God knows what else. Um, so yeah, I'm going to utilize this space better, have a bigger gym area, and then this section, this door will all be boarded up. But this section of the ceiling here will come out completely. So I'll have all this height right up to the top of the roof, 
which will give me one huge open wall um, and just a bit more room for taller items. I've got life-size displays, I've got various kiosks and all sorts of other stuff um, that will benefit from more roof space. So yeah, that's the new plan. I'm very excited. So there you go. Uh, that's everything that I've got planned. Um, I'm actually meeting with the builders again today um, of recording this video. So if there's any information since then, I will put it below and you'll be able to see where we're at. But hopefully we're going to have episode three of building the ultimate games room very, very soon. I mean, I can but hope, right? As much as you guys want to see it, believe me, I want it more. Ever since I bought this house, um, I've had this dream of getting it to a point where I've got carpet in that room, it's painted, the walls are white, and everything's basically just ready for me to get all my stuff under one roof and arrange it. I think I'm probably going to book like a week off work and just move stuff around. And yeah, that's like, whilst a lot of people have different dreams, um, that is my dream right now. I can't wait to get to that point where I can just start arranging all my stuff in that room. And yeah, I've got that excitement back after meeting with these builders. Whilst I've had to change things, as you know, I do think there's benefits in doing so. So yeah, I'm very, very excited and hopefully we'll have episode, is it three or four? I don't know. It's been that long since the last episode. I think it's three. Hopefully we'll have that in the next few weeks, but I appreciate everybody taking the time to watch this. I appreciate everybody's patience as well, because I know a lot of people have been asking about the 3.0 and I'm always referencing it, but it's just because it's always on my mind. So thanks again. I'll see you all next time. Play your games. Keep it retro. Take care. Retro ghetto. <laughs>